Well, welcome back to the show, Samir. It's, uh, it's been a while since the last time you were a guest here. Uh, thank you for having me back. Uh, I assume that the last one didn't go so, so bad. So uh, it's a good <laughs> sign that I'm back. Uh, Excited no, I'm, to. Very, very happy to be back. Yeah, awesome. Excited to have you. You guys have been busy over in Autodesk construction land over the, the last couple of years here, launching a, a whole new stuff. Last time you were on, you had just kind of launched the, the unified platform products with Build, Takeoff, and um, BIM Collaborate Pro and everything. So what's uh what's been going on? Over the last uh, you know, years. As, as, as you said it, you know, we've been a little bit busy, uh, you know, the, the world has uh, also changed uh, quite a bit since we last spoke. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've kept our head down and, and continue to sort of deliver on the promise that we made to our customers and to the industry of really sort of, you know, uh, delivering a, a connected construction platform that that's comprehensive, that's connected, uh, that's intelligent. Uh, you know, like you said, we, since we last spoke, we, we, we launched our uh, flagship uh, unified platform that includes Autodesk Build, Autodesk Takeoff, Autodesk BIM Collaborate, that really satisfies all the critical workflows across the entire life cycle of a construction project. Uh, but since, since we launched, uh, we've, we've continued to add more capabilities and more enhancements and more uh, power to, to that platform. Uh, we've had over 300 improvements in the platform uh, in just in the last 12 months. Uh, wow. and, and, you know, our, our adoption has just skyrocketed since we last spoke and since we, since we launched uh, the solution, you know, just in the last six months, we've had over 200% increase in the number of projects that have now started on our unified platform. Our customers are migrating, you know, at a, a, a rapid pace from some of our other uh, solutions uh, onto the unified platform. So that keeps us on our toes, keeps us busy. Uh, our customers are not shy about telling us how else we might be able to service their needs in our, in our unified platform uh, to make their processes even more efficient. And we're always you know, uh, happy to take their input and, and incorporate that into our roadmap and continue to uh, deliver at this frantic uh, high velocity pace. Yeah, nice. A anything surprise you uh, in that, you know, really launching the, the unified platform and uh, this kind of two year journey that you guys have been on? Yeah, you know, uh, what, what surprised me is actually the, the pace and, and and the confidence with which our customers have really embraced sort of this new new dimension and sort of this new horizon mm. of what we're delivering. You know, uh, I, I've I've done this you know for 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 uh, two and a half decades now, and I've seen you know when new products are introduced and new platforms are introduced, it, there's a certain amount of ramp up time. You you know you go through the first six eight months where you know it is you know sort of ramping up slowly, and then there's an inflection point. And what surprised me is that we saw that inflection point literally in the first two months of, of launching. You know, typically that takes about eight nine months. Uh, so I was pleasantly surprised by that. Um, you know, I, I was also very surprised with how resilient the construction mm -hmm. industry has been uh, through through the course of the last couple of years with the pandemic. Uh, and uh, in some sense, the pandemic maybe you know uh, uh, gave them a a a, a must do reason to embrace uh, digital platforms. Uh, more aggressively so maybe that has something to do with the pace at which we've seen the adoption mm -hmm. uh, but you know it always surprises me and, and positively surprises me on how resilient this industry is and how open they are to, to embracing um, these new capabilities to really turn, turn their you know business into into efficient powerhouses mm. yeah absolutely you know the construction industry takes a, a hard uh, rap of, of, of not being willing to embrace technology but I don't think that's entirely true. I think that it's the not. last two years <laughs> has more than debunked that. that yeah, meal. I mean, if you think about an industry that, um, you know, it has to be done in person, right? Like buildings have to be built in person. Right. For that industry to reinvent itself in a span of literally months um, to, to, to build things in a new way, but not everybody has uh, can be sort of uh, on the job site in person. That's a massive paradigm shift, you know, a shift that typically takes decades. And this industry had to do that in a couple of months and they pulled it off, right? And, mm -hmm. and in doing so, they actually made the industry operate better than it ever has, which is just mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I say, there's so many just incredible creative problem solvers in the, the construction industry. I mean, that's, that's what they do on a day to day job is, is figure out how to solve problems, but um, it's cool to see them see them do their thing. Uh, so you guys recently announced Bridge. Yep. Uh, what is Bridge? 
Yeah, uh, you know, I'm so excited to kind of talk about that. You know, as, as we, as I mentioned, you know, we are always looking and hearing from our customers on what their key pain points are. And, you know, one of the things that has come about as, as they've embraced sort of uh, this new horizon um, is that, look, you know, we, we are used to working in an environment where all information is collected in one place. But what actually happens under the hood is that although there is one place where information is collected, there are copies and replicas of that information sitting all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a GC. I have this, you know, my central, uh, my common data environment, and there's all the information sitting out there. But then the sub has their own, you know, subset of that information that they need just for their internal processes. And typically, the way that got managed was. Uh, hey, you know, let me download that information from the central hub and make a copy of that on my personal, you know, laptop drive, right? Or, you know, put it, you know, on, on box where I could share with, you know, five other people in my organization. Oh, mm -hmm. and now they made an update. Somebody's job, it's somebody's job to now take that updated information and re-upload that into that central hub. And invariably, when that happens, you now have five different versions of that. Everybody has a different uh, idea of the source of truth of what is, what is reality. Right. And that then, you know, um, uh, lands up uh, in, in, you know, mistakes being made and, you know, wrong assumptions being being worked off of. Uh, and that becomes sort of the bone of contention when it comes to repeated work and, and, and basic, you know, uh, effort. Uh, that's how, you know, under the hood things were working. And it's very frustrating, especially a, a business that is going growing at, you know, rapid pace, but has to has a lot of margin pressure. Um, and so when we kind of uh, looked at that and kind of scratched our heads, and, you know, what can we do to, to solve this problem? What became evident to us is that, you know, the underlying technology is not built to operate the way the industry wants to operate. The way the industry wants to operate is that, yes, there is a, a hub of, of, of central information, but everyone wants their own subset of information where they can do their work and at the right time exchange information with the central hub, right? And that became sort of, that was how the, the idea of, of bridge was born, is really helping people build their own hubs and building a bridge between those hubs so that those bridges, bridges can, or those hubs can communicate with each other uh, without anyone having to do manual effort. You define the rules of communication, you define the rules of you know, exchange of information and the touch points when that exchange needs to happen and the system just takes care of it, right? You know, it's, it's, it's automatical, right? Uh, and, and that's what Bridge does. Bridge allows uh, our customers to set up you know, for their organization, their, their, their hub of, of data and bring these hubs together or you know, get these hubs to communicate with each other through Bridge uh, under very defined sort of rules that uh, they took sort of their business policies. Uh, and, and, you know, all of the heavy lifting in, in terms of keeping information in sync uh, happens under the hood without anyone having to do any massive effort. So they can continue to doing their business. They can continue to focus on what's most important uh, to getting their job done without having to worry about, you know, moving documents, emailing documents back and forth, keeping things in sync. All of that pain just goes away. Yeah, nice. So what's one of the, really the, the biggest ramifications for the industry with disconnected data? You know, the biggest thing that we've seen is just um, uh, the errors that happen during a construction process. It's not mm -hmm. because, you know, the crew didn't know what to do, is that the crew was acting on wrong information. And why was the crew acting on wrong information is because a particular version didn't get updated that was mm -hmm. copied from, from the central place, right? Um, so, uh, invariably, a lot of the errors and, 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 and repeat work and wasted sort of, you know, labor and, and material stems from this underlying problem of keeping data updated in multiple different places. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, you were explaining how Bridge, which it's a great name. We love bridges around here, uh, but how you were explaining how a bridge really connects all, all those data points together and makes it kind of seamless there. wonder if you can kind of dive into that a, a bit more um, of, you know, how does it, sure. how's that kind of mechanics and, and process really work? Yeah. So if you take a typical workflow, you know, um, when you upload a, a multi-page PDF document um, mm -hmm. into, in, into a, a document management system, at some point, you know, a document controller comes in there and breaks that multi-page PDF document down into individual sheets. And some of those sheets may be trade specific. You know, some of those sheets may need to go to your, you know, uh, HVAC, you know, uh, provider, you know, uh, or you know, other 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 trades, right? Um, what used to happen before is that literally the document controller would download that sheet 
and email it out to, to the downstream trade if, if they didn't have an account on the same document management system. A leg up from there was, okay, let me give them an account. Well, so the HVAC vendor would come in and they would say, well, I, I have access to it, but I can do my markups on this sheet because you know I, these are my internal markups. I don't want these to be visible across the board to everybody. And more mm -hmm. importantly, you know, these are things that I need to do for my own record keeping. So even after the project has ended and I don't have access to the central hub anymore, I still need to keep a record of what I did um, so that if there are questions downstream, I have that information to point to in order to provide my answers, right? Mm -hmm. and so invariably what, what, what the um, uh, vendor would do is download that sheet. Even though they had access to the central in, uh, uh, repository, they would download that information and store it in, in some other uh, system that they had. Uh, and then, you know, they would work off of that. But in the meantime, you know, the, the central system has changed because the, you know, the owner wants a modification and the architect has, you know, uh, changed some something in, in the design. And now there's a new sort of version set. Uh, and, and that version set is there in the central repository, but the person who, you know, initially downloaded it and, and created a, a local replica has moved on. They've moved to a different project. They've left the company. And there's, a, there's now disconnected data. Somebody's working on, on version you know, 1.0 and this has been updated to version you know, 3.0. Mm -hmm. And that's where an error comes up uh, in the field because you just worked off of the wrong information. Right. And, and that's so, how you know, uh, uh, you know, sort of the industry has been sort of chugging along and trying to sort of make things work. Yeah. So what's kind of the, some of the, the biggest practical benefits of being able to really specifically pick what information you're sharing and, and who you're, you're sharing it with. Yeah. And yeah. So now with, with bridge, if I just extend that example, all, all, you know, uh, the two organizations need to do is say, okay, you know, we've got, you know, we're, we're using, uh, uh, Autodesk construction cloud. You're using Autodesk construction cloud. We have this hub, you have this hub. Let's connect both those hubs together and say for this project and for th this particular, you know, set of sheets under these circumstances, there will be an exchange of information. You know, they, that, those two versions will be synchronized, right? Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden, irrespective of who's rotating, you know, how workforce is rotating on each side, um, and we know there's a lot of rotation happening in the in the industry given labor shortages and such, sure. you don't have to worry about keeping that resident sort of institutional knowledge somewhere or that's sitting in, in someone's head in order to make things work, right? So mm -hmm. now with, with Bridge, those same sheets are being exchanged between these two, two hubs seamlessly. Uh, files are being exchanged between these two hubs seamlessly. So everyone is working off of their own uh, record of the information, but that record of information is always the latest and the and the right record of information. Yeah, nice. Uh, what kind of ramp up time is is needed to set all the the syncs up to begin with to let it kind of run and, and do its thing? Yeah, you know, literally seconds. You know, uh, you you basically go into the product and and and. and pick sort of the rule set and you know it's a it's a very easy sort of rule set that you can pick from um, and you pick the rule set and you say I want to apply that rule set to um, you know this particular project or these projects uh, mm -hmm. in, in my hub and here's the the destination where I want it to be synchronized right and it literally takes you know you know seconds to minutes to kind of set all of that up and, and then it's done. Nice and then who has access to bridge and, and how would they go about getting it? Yeah, so your administrators in your organization could be project administrators or, or account administrators. They have access to Bridge um, and they can apply uh, the sort of the, the Bridge technology to either their project or across multiple projects. Uh, it comes out of the box. Um, so if you are a, a user of, of Autodesk Build, uh, it comes out of the box with Autodesk Build. Uh, there isn't any additional sort of toggle or button that you have to kind of turn on. As long as you've got the administrative sort of privileges, um, mm -hmm. you will see that show up in your, in your, uh, account. Nice. Uh, what's kind of the, the plan as you're, you're adding all these new functionalities and, and oh. kind of capabilities into Autodesk construction cloud, what's kind of the, what's the, the future look like and, uh, kind of the, the vision moving forward for it. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, uh, I could go on forever uh, <laughs> talking about sort of, you know, the exciting plans we have, but just to sort of, you know, keep it buttoned down, you know, with bridge, you know, we're going to extend that beyond today. It works with sheets and files. We ultimately want to get to specific elements so that you can do the same kind of exchange of things like RFIs or, or issues or even markups. So you can say, you know, some markups I'm going to make on my own version, other markups I want to make on my own version, but I want to synchronize with my partner's you know, version. Um, and so there's a, a, a roadmap in front of us 
where we're going to enable individual elements to also get synchronized beyond just files and, and, and sheets. Uh, and then ultimately to also enable um, distributed uh, processes or workflows where let's say you and I are doing design collaboration. Today, you and I have to work on the same instance to do our design collaboration uh, or the, in the same hub. Mm. Tomorrow, as, as bridge uh, capabilities expand, you can work on your uh, hub, I can work on my hub, but we are collaborating with each other and doing design collaboration while still working on our, our individual hub. So it's gonna go from files and sheets to individual elements to workflows. Um, that's, the, the, that's the vision for, for bridge. Uh, but then in general, you know, our vision uh, for Autodesk Construction Cloud Unified Platform is that it becomes a standardized solution uh, that, uh, that any organization can adopt and roll out easily, and the entire industry can then rely on and roll out easily. And, and we are starting to see proof points of that. You know, very recently, uh, we had a, uh, you know, premium sort of uh, uh, customer uh, from, from uh, who's based in Atlanta, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, you know we, we, we just sort of announced that recently. Uh, and this GC, you know, basically said, you know, based on the ACC capabilities, uh, you know, we want to roll it out and standardize that across the entire organization. Uh, and so, you know, within a span of a, of a couple of months, they're going to, uh, you know, turn ACC into the standard way of, of, of doing construction to their entire organization. And we're seeing more and more stories like that on our platform. And, and the idea is to, you know, make that the de facto standard, right? That's, that's our vision. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how do you think construction is kind of shifting and uh, adapting, you know, especially all the, we started talking about the, the last two years and the kind of embrace of, of digital workflows, casting out, you know, five, 10 years, how's the industry looking uh, from not just the, the technology side, but, you know, kind of holistically. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's uh, the, the industry is, is, looking to reshape various aspects of how things, things get done. And we're seeing trends like, you know, industrial construction becoming more mainstream, right? We're mm -hmm. seeing uh, trends like, you know, tapping into the power of AR and VR becoming more mainstream. You know, what used to be more on sort of the fringe is, is starting to become, uh, again, sort of the de facto way in which, you know, uh, things get done. You know, the way, you know, uh, construction projects are planned and, and estimated for uh, is going to become, you know, more effective. And, and we're going to play an active role in that. You know, one of the areas where we're uh, investing actively on is uh, bolstering up our, our pre-construction offering. Uh, we have the best in class solutions on, on the pre-construction side, but uh, on the bidding side, on the estimating, our, our most recent acquisition of ProS gives us, you know, a, a powerful asset when it comes to estimating. But I see all of these uh, core capabilities that we have becoming more intelligent, you know, using the power of machine learning, things that are tedious and manual can become, you know, automated uh, and more accurate, right? And so I see the industry becoming more efficient by uh, turning their existing processes into more efficient processes through, through things like machine learning, through things like AI, tapping into new processes using things like AR, AR VR, and then re-imagining uh, uh, how, you know, where construction actually happens uh, when you think, look at uh, movements like industrial construction, and then the convergence of, of, of construction and manufacturing, where again, you know, we have a lot of experience, we see that happening more and more, so that not only are your processes getting reinvented, but where do you actually do the construction, and you know, how, how, uh, 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 you know, how aggressively you do construction, and, and how uh, 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 standardized uh, uh, processes uh, are followed sort of offsite. That we think is a big, big opportunity and a big movement happening. This so is projecting ten years from now. I see a big part of our construction happening uh, in in industries with lower waste, with you know uh, 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 more more uh, 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 fine tuned sort of you know precision uh, and and you know with sort of labor uh, that is trained in in those uh, those effective ways. And they find you know our labor finds that work you know as fulfilling um, as as they find work fulfilling today. Yeah. So I'm curious, you know, there's, there's so many different areas of uh, kind of impact that is coming down construction. You, you listed a, a lot there with the, the convergence of manufacturing and construction with digital twins and, uh, you know, AI and all, all these kind of big things that, that could really revolutionize the, the industry. When does it, wh where's, how do you know when the tipping point is between the kind of, uh, you know, the, the innovation and the, the buzzword to when it becomes really practical for construction companies to be like, I, this is a must. I have to start embracing this and getting on this train, even if it's on the early side. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you that um, 
you won't know that tipping point when it's happening. You'll only know it looking back. <laughs> <You'll only laughs> that's see, probably very true. <laughs> you know, last year is when that tipping point happened. That that's how you, you you typically you can realize that there was a tipping point, right? Yeah. But I, you know, I I'm a technologist at heart, so I get really excited about the the what's possible, right? Um, and and from what I see, you know, I I look at more kind of how the momentum is building up rather than when is that tipping point. Mm-hmm. And when I see, you know. The technologies that we just talked about, whether it's offset, you know, industrialized construction, it's digital twin, it's AR, VR, I'm seeing momentum build up, right? And and you know, it's becoming more and more mainstream, right? You know, before uh, when I used to sit with customers, uh, towards the last five minutes, there was a conversation around around these these things that at that point was on the fringe. Today, mm-hmm. conversations are starting on those topics. So to mm-hmm. me, that's a build up of momentum. So I I wouldn't be able to tell you whether tip, when the tipping point is. But I know that the momentum is building up, and the tipping point is is sooner than you expect, right? Uh, but you know, I couldn't tell you with precision when it is going to happen. But I will tell you that you will look back, you know, a few years from now and say, ah, two years ago or three years ago, that is when the tipping point was. Yeah, uh, no, I, I love that. I think that's a, a great perspective on it for sure. To you can feel the momentum coming in, and I agree. I think on a lot of those areas that the momentum is is not only picking up it's it's reaching a, a pretty good groundswell for sure yep. uh so if you could kind of innovate one thing in the industry and you know snap your fingers and it's done what would you what would you innovate you know i i would love to figure out a way in which there is less waste in the industry right there is still a lot of waste happening in the industry and when you think about like sustainable construction uh not only is there a huge opportunity to do something meaningful to make construction more sustainable. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think we owe it to each other, right? We, we owe it as, as fellow fellow humans, we owe it to each other um, to, to do something about the ways that's happening in the industry and make it more sustainable. So, you know, an area of innovation that I'd love to see and that across, goes across the entire supply chain to how things are planned and estimated to how, you know, data is kept and sync across the entire, uh, all the stakeholders so that they're working with the right, you know, the, the accurate information so that mm. you know, errors are not committed out of lack of information or, or, or working off of wrong information to, you know, how uh, things are commissioned ultimately and, 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 and managed operationally so that even at the operation time, there's less wastage. To me, all of those things need to fall in place uh, in order to make sure that we are, are constructing in a more sustainable manner. And in, you know, in a nutshell, we kind of call this entire spectrum connected construction. So if we deliver on this promise of connected construction and get the industry to embrace this idea of connected construction, that's where I, I gain a lot of confidence that we, we work the industry towards a more sustainable uh, future, right? And, and that to me is, is where uh, the, the focus of at least my, my sort of, you know, uh, uh, energy is, 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 is to enable that innovation. Yeah, that's a great one. And I more than agree with you. I think technology is for sure the, the path there to, to help in that sustainable construction Avenue. We can, we can start eliminating a lot of the, the waste and the errors in the model, mm-hmm. then we don't have to worry about bringing it in as much on when we're actually time to go to the, the job site and build the building and get all the materials. Exactly. Hopefully we've already I did a lot of that stuff. So exactly. uh, I did it. we've manufactured big parts of it and now we're bringing it together and like, you know, like precision sort of, you know, science, it all just, you know, fits together and it, you know, you don't have to kind of bring it there just to realize that it doesn't work and send it back and we can configure and create all of that wastage of time, energy, labor, uh, right. you know, uh, capital. Uh, yeah. If we can get to that, that future, you know, we'll, we'll all be better for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how do people find out more information on Bridge and Modernist Construction Cloud? Uh, if you just go to our our website, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, at uh, uh, Autodesk, you know, there's a pointer to to construction. You go there; it'll be all over all over that website. I'm sure you know uh, Niyati can also get you some some more detailed information where, where to find uh, find the right pointers. Awesome. Well, Samir, thanks so much for coming back on the show again. Thanks for having me. Have a great conversation. Likewise, Todd. Thank you very much. 